Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual TrekCon and the Seventh Rule present the STLV PreCon Con with Sirach Lofton, of course. Hello, hello. My name is Ryan T. Husk. We also have Melissa Longo here. Hi. <laughs> Our good pal, Andre Sci-Fi Guy Cotman. Hey, hey. We've got Rico E. Anderson, actor. What's up, everybody? Party people. Uh, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel is coming as well. She had to restart her computer or something. Look, the point is, uh, <laughs> before we hit record, everybody, we were laughing a lot because that's what we do when we get together. And uh, we yep. would hang out with Darnell Davis and he would laugh a lot as well. And he would make us laugh a lot and he'd be the one laughing the hardest at all the terrible things we just said a couple minutes ago and we miss him dearly and for the next 30 minutes or so we will be talking about who he was and why we miss him so much and everybody in the live chat please let us know that you uh see us and hear us and everything's good to go please in the live chat give us a bunch of hearts to let us know that you know who darnell is was and how much you loved him and we can just get started here hello to sherry sc nurse kathy d roger grow chuck a linda anderegg war dog heim cassandra hello heather m fran iverson lisa mackey chris marshall glenn iverson portia allison leach hyde it's only one way to say it. you gotta say it like that <laughs> Robin Caceres, hello, welcome, uh, and everybody in the chat, we see all of you. Let's get started. This is the Star Trek Las Vegas Pre-Con Con, which is where I met Darnell Davis at Star Trek Las Vegas. I'll just, I guess I'll start it that way, right? Mm -hmm. The first Star Trek Las Vegas convention I went to in 2007 with uh, my good buddy, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg and Darth Shuey. My brother even flew in from San Francisco, Darth Shuey's dad. We all went and uh, at the Hilton, the Star Trek Hilton, we met Darnell Davis and he was shockingly nice or we thought it was shocking. Turns out all Star Trek fans for the most part are super nice. Um, but Darnell, I would always say was the nicest guy I knew in LA. And he truly was, and he would always say, no, man, that's you. But it was obviously, <laughs> it was obviously him. We all know he was the Aww. nicest guy that anybody knew. <laughs> and I miss him so much. And I can hear his voice and I can hear his laugh. And uh, it's going to be really tough when Darth and I drive up to Vegas without Darnell, because we would always drive up to Vegas for the STLV with him and back. And on the way up, we would just talk about how excited we were about it and all the things we we're looking forward to. And then on the way back, we would just sit in traffic going through the high desert and talk so much shit about all of you, <laughs> <laughs> all of the horrible, <laughs> we were terrible. And it was, I want to miss him so much. It was just such a great time. Um, but let's just open this up and get into it. Sirach, you remember Darnell. What do you, uh, do you remember when you met him? We would do these big watch parties, Star Trek watch parties at Andre's place in Glendale. Is that where you met him? Yeah, I want to say that's where we connected the most. Um, I may have met him prior to that, but that's where, where I really got to know him and um, get to know his character. And, you know, more than the first place I met him, I like to think about the last place I saw him. And... Um, because I remember that was when Aaron passed away, the last time I had seen him was at the STLV con. And, um, and now Darnell, the last time I remember seeing him was on the Star Trek cruise to Mexico. Um, I remember him being there, um, hanging out. He always had a great, you know, just a, I'm having a good time. Don't worry about me type of attitude. Mm -hmm. um, he was great at just making you feel, you know, like he was in your world when he was talking with you. And, you know, a lot of his spirit 
you know, reminds me kind of like um, Uncle Phil on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know, like <laughs> hold, hold yeah. you accountable, make you laugh. <laughs> You know, it was kind of like, you know, it was just a little bit of all of that. And that's how I felt about him. He was like, I'm watching. I'm watching what's going on here and I'm taking the count. So it was an it was an Uncle Phil type of feeling around him. And I always felt comfortable with Darnell. And the last time I saw him, he was doing well. He was, you know, talking about how he was able to recover from the surgery he had. Um, he was walking with the cane and stuff prior to that towards the end and then kind of getting off of it um but yeah we loved Darnell and his fear was amazing he was just always smiling that's one thing that uh he shares in common with uh the late great Aaron Eisenberg is I just remember people's smiles you know and when somebody smiles and they're able to make you smile and and you guys share that moment together. I mean, those are the kind of special things. And he was always smiling, always engaging. And so we're, we're going to miss Darnell. And we really, truly love him. He was always super supportive, too. Like, he would always say how proud he was of people and, and how much he cared about them and would lift them up and compliment them. And he totally meant it, which is a kind of a rare thing here in LA, but he absolutely meant it. Uh, Melissa, do you have a, do you remember where you met Darnell or mm -hmm. can you tell us about that yeah. or even the most recent time? Uh, I remember meeting Darnell <clears throat> first, my first Star Trek Las Vegas in 2014 in the hallway of the Rio, right by the hash house. Was that the hash house? Where, where's the breakfast place? Yeah. That's the hash house. Yeah. The hashway house. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I remember him. I remember Aaron introducing me to him and thinking, gosh, this guy has such a presence. He's, he's, yeah. It, 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 meeting him for the first time, you just felt like you knew him already. He was just that welcoming and seeing him over the years since then has that hadn't changed he was always so generous and with you know his, his warmth <laughs> he had this warmth about him and uh yeah uh he he's definitely somebody that stuck out stuck out in my head that very first convention mm -hmm. um yeah. And I want to also add to that, by the way, and just the thought came to my mind while I'm thinking about it. He's one of the few black men that were in the community that was visible and constantly present. And, you know, we don't have that much representation in the sci fi world as fans and as actors and producers. And so the very few limited ones that we see amongst each other in those hallways you have to gravitate towards, you have to embrace yep. them because it's not too many of us in that circle. And um, Darnell made his presence felt as a black man in this world of science fiction. And that's what uh, another thing that attracted to me, uh, me to him was that, you know, he stood out because he was exceptional in that way. He was um, somebody that was representing on behalf of the culture and so to see another black man at these events was something that always brought a smile to my face. So I want to mm -hmm. add that to it. Totally. Good point. Uh, look. Oh, and Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel is back. Welcome back, doctor. Um, I do want to point out Rico E. Anderson is another one of the OGs of the sci-fi community. Mm -hmm. And he remembers shows and actors and sci-fi stuff that nobody knows he's a real one. He should be hashtag real one. Uh, and he lived like 45 feet from Darnell, Rico. And so they would both come to the same party and Rico would be like, Darnell, you're here. We could have carpooled, bro. What's, what's going on? What are you doing? What? Every single time. Every single time. <laughs> And Ryan is not even exaggerating. We're, 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 I'm like, 
you know, a block from That's him. so funny. From, from his building, oh. yeah. And, like, he'll show up, like, Andre, to your place. Mm-hmm. And Darnell didn't drive. So <laughs> I'm just right. like, dude, what's up with that? And, um, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you, a couple of y'all touched on it. You know, he, he just... He he did his he did his thing, you know, and and he 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 was you know he was he was his own person, and you know he I, I don't know if it's just because he didn't you know want to bother you know felt like he didn't want to bother anybody. Well, I don't know what it was, but you know it, it was always that running joke uh, whenever we saw, <laughs> and I always remember saying to him, "Hey man, call me if you know if we both know something's going on, and we both know there's a high chance we're gonna be there. Text your boy." And uh, and they got to the point where I, and, you know, a couple of times, I, I a few times, I, you know, I did text them. Hey, you gonna be there? You need a ride? No, no, I'm good, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to touch. I want to uh, kind of piggyback off uh, something Ciroc said. So, you know, um, there's this thing. Uh, it, it's kind of an unspoken thing in the black community. It's like when we go to a spot, to an event, to a function or whatever, we automatically look for the black people in the place. So kind of like in, in, in line of what you were saying, uh, Ciroc, you know, it's like you, Darnell was one of those people that, you know, when you were, when you're at an event, you, you, you instantly knew he was there and it was, it was always wonderful to have that, um, like you were saying that, that representation amongst fandom, uh, especially in the Trek community and, but just, just nerd fandom as a whole. And, and Darnell was not shy about, uh, his fandom and his love of it and uh, his his representation of that, even down to the the, the next generation uh, skirt uh, that uh, <laughs> he, he scant, yes. yeah. yeah, the guy in the skirt, he hey, rocked it, he rocked it. 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 What great legs it. he had, too. Love that thing. <laughs> boots <laughs> and all, pull that off. It. more no than fear. most people. <laughs> yeah. Um, here it is but right just here always just a, just a really sweet guy uh mm-hmm. cool dude and just overall there you go there you go yes <laughs> there you go look at that love it oh. yeah. yeah there you go always mm-hmm. yeah yeah um so i'm trying to remember the first time i met darnell i i for some reason it's not click i, I it was before the 50th i know that mm-hmm. um it might have been at the premiere at the renegades premiere i'm not sure um, but that's when I first met him. 2015, yep, maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, wow. you know, always supportive of my projects and just anything that we were all collectively involved in. Or you know, he was always excited for the next track event, the next track episode preview, all the things. You know, and it was just always wonderful seeing him there and and just and just spending that time with him and and all the stuff so thanks uh andre you're saying you met rico or uh sorry uh darnell at the uh, premiere i think it was either at the premiere or either at one of your parties but i um when like he plugged right into the parties that i threw at my place but the biggest memory of him was like he was so dedicated to just Mm -hmm. being there and just enjoying trek with us and he was such a calming and cool and just fun presence to be around like, and I remember like he would, he biked all the way across town, like multiple times for all the parties. Like he just wanted to be in the room and plug right into the action and, and the laughter just add, added to everything, you know? So that, those, I think that's probably my best memory of him is just where he plugged in and how he plugged in at the parties, you know? But he, I could tell like he was just, he was there. If you called him or like if, if whatever he wanted to do, like however he wanted to plug in, he got there. He made sure he got there. I was like, man, you biked. Biking in LA is not easy. I mean, driving in LA isn't easy. You know what I mean? But like the dedication to just be with the group, I was like, wow, dude, like, yes. So it's wanted to throw that nugget in. Hmm. Here's another quick video, a uh, picture of him. I believe this was at Long Beach Comic Con. I don't know if Long Beach Comic Con oh still happens, but that was that a fun was one. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> wow. Uh, what a, now, Dr. Anne Marie Seagull, you may have met Darnell the most 
recently, but he still left a very profound impact on you. I felt like after that first convention in 2019, your first convention, you were like talking like 5% about the Star Trek convention and 95% about Darnell. (laughs) (laughs) You know, well, we just like bonded because, well, first of all, the reason I went to Star Trek Las Vegas for my first time ever in 2019 was because I was a fan of Seventh Rule and you guys did all these fan videos every day, like a month leading up to August. And there were a couple that really stood out. And one of those was Darnell Davis. And it's just like so excited about the convention. So when I went to the convention, like spur of the moment, I was like, okay, I want to meet this person, this person, this person, this person (laughs) from the videos and like thank them because I ended up having like the time of my life. So the last person I met was the last day at the pool party. I see like this looming guy coming over and I was like, oh my God, it's Darnell. And we just instantly hit it off and he was just so wonderful and like so supportive and loving and so humble like as we were talking it came out like oh yeah I was the Klingon in Star Trek 6 which is my favorite Star Trek movie yep. um the Klingon <laughs> standing behind Scotty in the kitchen record scene um it was just he was just so lovely and amazing we hit it off because we both love British television and he was a massive Downton Abbey fan so when Ed Spilliard was on Picard, I was like, damn it, Darnell, Dar- I'm not much of a photo op person, but I was like, uh, Darnell and I would have definitely got a photo op with him for Downton Abbey purposes. But um, mm-hmm. he was just so wonderful and was just so proud of his friends anytime anybody did yeah. like anything. And he's always saying like how proud of Ryan Sirac he was, like when Seventh Rule was taking off and getting over the loss of Aaron. And I mean, he would, we'd sit at the convention and kind of like, he liked to people watch. So if we saw people flirting, (laughs) he would always say, he would would always say, well, the heart wants what the heart wants. (laughs) 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 Which now when I people watch, I always say that like in his voice in my head, it was just so sweet. And like when he would give me dating advice, he would say that. And just, I just love the Darnellisms. And there are a couple other things like, just like in terms of like what an amazing human he was, he did the um, AIDS HIV walk in LA. And right. every time somebody would donate, even if it was like a dollar, he would do a special post just for them. And he would put on things that like they like. So on mine, it had like a picture of me and Darnell meeting for the first time at Gold and going to Gold Coast Buffet. <laughs> and then it had <laughs> a picture of like uh, Thomas, the Downton Abbey, like first footman like telling me thank you it was just so sweet and thoughtful and he did that for every single person who donated and it was just like that kind of attention to everybody and everybody's passions and hobbies and likes that were just so amazing and also after we met which literally was just a buffet <laughs> walking back across the street to Rio a few days later um I got in the mail like magnets of our first meeting me and him from our refrigerator it was just so cute and lovely and He's going to be very terribly missed. Darnell was really good mm-hmm. about birthdays and uh, yeah. uh, in terms of like the, the pictures and stuff, like when he wished you a happy birthday, he reached in the crates and grabbed those pictures of you know, <laughs> me when I had the big fro, you know, I <laughs> and he'd, he'd be like, I'm bring it so. back. Yeah. Bring <laughs> it back. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, but yeah, you know, he'll, 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 he will set up a little mini collage or whatever, just to say happy birthday. And he, he, he never missed a beat with that, with, with everybody, you know, anybody he was in contact with stuff like that. So he was, uh, super supportive. Uh, it makes me want to pull up a couple quick things. Uh, Ciroc, I feel like you may have seen this, but I want to show this is what a supportive guy he was. This was just after last year's Star Trek Las Vegas. He is posting. He says, my friend's giving one of the best panels I'd ever watched. And it was the seventh rule panel. And I don't know, it just seemed like such a supportive thing to do to be posting about somebody else's panel and kind of bragging for us, you know? And that was the kind of guy that, he was i was also hoping just very quickly there's there are a couple pictures that i'm that i really like 
that I've had, you know, it must be like maybe 10 years old or something, but this was during karaoke at Star Trek Las Vegas that I loved so much. Oh, uh, yeah. That was a fun time. <laughs> uh, he was all, what was great about him was that <laughs> you could have as much fun with him. He was always at the front row during karaoke, cheering everybody on, taking a million pictures like, like uh, Rico is telling us. He's got thousands and thousands of pictures in the vault of everybody. Didn't take a bunch of pictures of himself. But this is that same night. This is probably my favorite picture ever. And uh, I'm not really entirely sure why, but this is just my favorite. This was during karaoke when we're dancing. (laughs) And he's giving me, he's giving me the time of my life right here. (laughs) Also, because look at the look on her. She's like, why did I sit next to these guys? What am I doing? (laughs) Should I give you two some privacy? (laughs) <laughs> but, like in a personal show <laughs> yeah uh, so, some, of, some of ryan's best acting right <laughs> <laughs> I, look how he look how his eyes are and his face locked in i love it yeah, that guy, <laughs> yeah totally acting <laughs> <laughs> so we just have a few more minutes be- because uh this video that Anne-Marie was talking about that helped to convince her to go to her very first Star Trek Las Vegas, this interview uh, where myself and Sirach and Aaron Eisenberg interviewed Darnell. And uh, Darnell had some tech issues because this was in 2019 before people were used to Zoom yet. And Melissa, you were saying that Aaron, oh my gosh. after the video, <laughs> kept showing you the video and yeah. be like, look at how his face froze on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> and he would crack up. <laughs> he, would cr- he was crying and he would, he had this laugh where you, you can't hear it anymore and you can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Andre, I just... <laughs> I used to love those events, those watch parties at your house. And um, I just, you know, really cherish those, those moments that we were able to watch the screeners and watch the episodes together. Kind of like, you know, it was one big family from Lots of good memories, Yeah, you know, just everybody bringing their own kind of world view into your house and, and suspending it for a premiere or preview of an episode. And just all of us, kind of just becoming, you know, really close and tight during those times. And I, I really appreciate you for hosting those events, Andre, because um, those are more Thank special you. to me because they're so, they're so mm-hmm. personal. And, you know, personal. We, we ate together. We, we, we made jokes. We commentated on stuff together. We, it was really um, like being at a barbecue at a friend's, you know, at a family. And that's how I felt like a family. Yeah. And that's More why coming. that's why Andre, we're forcing yeah. you to move back to LA so we can yes. do it. We, we thought when Andre right. moved away, we're like, we'll still do it. No, we yeah. didn't. Andre, get back over here. Uh, what were you saying, Amory? Yeah. Just just one more thing. Uh, when I when Darnell passed away, I and Facebook was just bombarded with posts about him and everybody missing him and how much he meant to them everybody kept saying things like he was so, like truly a gentle giant and a lovely mm-hmm. human. And one thing as like the HIV walk pictures, for example, or other causes that Darnell helped with came up on the feed. Like you could just see, like he really helped the underdog. And I mean, he was built yeah. like a linebacker and just him being in those pictures, like no one's going to mess with him. And it just like brought so much to the cause and he really stood up for what he believed in and people's rights and fair treatment. And he was just a beautiful person and so sorely missed. Not going to be the same without him. You know, uh, I cast him in a lot of movies, and every single time he's one of those few people that if you get him on set, you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about them. Our good buddy Scott Baker is another one of those people where you can just you can bring them on something, and you know they are going to be the A plus person, whether they're going to be you know, the professional actor or the professional camera person, he was zero problem. He would never complain about anything. He would always give anybody the shirt off his back and be nice to everybody, whether it was an old friend or a new friend. Um, 
we also, and we do still have a couple minutes, by the way, because the other one's starting in five minutes, because I figured we might need a little leeway. <laughs> but uh, Rico, when you're talking about how close you and Darnell lived, I think I told you about this, but the last time uh, Darnell passed away, I believe it was uh, April 12th or April 13th. And last time I saw Darnell was April 1st or 2nd. I went over to his place because we're nerds to watch WrestleMania together. Ah. And he was, <laughs> and he was always Amazing. the best WrestleMania host. And we would hang out and just eat shit. And, uh, you know, but he was actually very healthy. He had been very healthy. So he came by, he comes over to me on the couch. He's like, he's like, hey, man, I got some cookies for you. They're all sugar free. I'm like, what? This is great. <laughs> you know, but, but what the reason I brought that up was because Rico, I went over to Darnell's place and I was like, I called him. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I can't find your apartment building. Like it's supposed to be in between. Yeah, you gave me the wrong address for him. So my card. Yeah. <laughs> <back>. <laughs> yeah. And and I couldn't figure, I'm like, what's going on? And then I realized that I went to your place, <laughs> Rico, because you guys were so close. I was used to going to you. And so I was like, I was just like a funny thing that you guys were so close, but he never wanted to bother you. He was always like, I'll, I'll just ride my bike to this yeah. place or that place. But he was a great guy till the very end. Uh, it was a very mm-hmm. sudden thing. Uh, I didn't, there wasn't any kind of long prolonged anything. I'd just seen him and talked to him the, the week before and he was great. And we were talking shit about wrestlers. I, I think Darnell passed, and you guys correct me on my math on this. I think he passed like one week shy of like the Picard season. Yes. And oh. yeah. Oh, and that was one I was so sad he didn't see it. Oh. Yeah. I was just like, man, he didn't get a chance to, to, to see the completion of all of that. And, you know, of course, we were all super excited about you know, just the fact that this season was what it was. And, you know, we're all sharing that common nerdism. And uh, man, that was one of the first things I, you know, just going through my head once I found out he passed. And I was just like, man. And I was thinking about that too, because I had a friend who passed away years ago who uh, who was a huge nerd also, Star Trek nerd and everything. And it, the same thing. And so. So cute. Yeah. Oh, that's there's a picture from the party. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we have a uh, just a minute or two. Does anybody else have any uh final thoughts they want to? Well, I want to say that the last the last time I did talk to Darnell and saw him, uh, it was the happiest I'd ever seen him. He was having the best time of his life, and um, I'm glad that he always chased those experiences. And I think that's a lesson for all of us to go out there, live your life enjoy these moments you know because uh, that's how we you know make these great memories and i can have a lot of great memories with darnell and he never was afraid to chase an adventure and uh, join in on the on the fun at these events well said yeah and he brought love and awesomeness to every space that he was ever in he was just wonderful to have around and i'm so glad that i got to met meet him and enjoy time with him and celebrating something we all love. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked if Darnell in the live chat asked if Darnell was an actor. So I just linked his IMDb page for everybody to go check that out. Uh, and I, uh, and Anne Marie, you were so right about his people watching. Cause I, I remember <laughs> people watching with him at least a dozen times. Where yes. you, you just, oh. you end up sitting next to him and then you're just people watching all of a sudden. And, he was the he was like an expert master level people watcher. He so. really understood the human condition. <laughs> he knew yeah. where to sit for the best spots to people watch. And I, yep. I, I yeah, love that about him. We were at Valleys for one year and within the first like couple hours, he knew the couch to sit on in Valleys. <laughs> <laughs> do you think when he would show up to a, a convention the first time, do you think he would like look and be like, yes. that's, that's the spot? That's- Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. That's a good point. Everybody in the live chat will uh, hop out in just a few seconds, but give us a bunch of hearts, especially if you remember always walking by Darnell at Star Trek Las Vegas, either 
sitting at the little casino machine at the masquerade bar because you just sit back (laughs) and people watch (laughs) or at that bench right outside of the vendor's room so you just see everybody walk in and out people would sit down and take a break with him that was definitely Mm -hmm. his spot um by the elevators on the cruise right 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 by that bar So uh, the next video that's starting in just a second here, everybody, is a re-premiering of our initial interview with Darnell, with myself, Sirach, and Mr. Aaron Eisenberg. We just put the link in the description box below. Uh, We love you, Darnell. Uh, We love everybody in the live chat for joining in and honoring him, Uh, Andre, Sirach, Rico, Anne-Marie, Melissa. I love you guys, Um, and I can't wait to see all of you whenever the next time is. Uh, any final words before we go? Rest in peace, Darnell. Yeah. Warp speed. All right, everybody, click on that link and uh, go say hi to Darnell in the other video.